The Pint of Science, brought to you by the Faculty of Science, Charles University in Prague, Department of Chemistry, sponsored by the Pilsner Brewery. And today I would like to speak about new types of RNA modifications, what is really uh, what is really new in the film, how I contribute to it, and what we are actually doing with my goals to find new uh, types of RNA modifications. So when we talk about the uh, RNA, we have to definitely start with DNA, because everything is written in a DNA and RNA is transcribed. And it's at least 80% of DNA which is transcribed. Only 5% but codes for the protein, so it means only 5% is uh, mRNA, the rest is non-coding RNA, ribosomal RNA, tRNA or regulatory RNA. We know the function for very small portion of regulatory RNAs. Uh, the information is an RNA encoded actually in three layers, by sequence, by secondary structure and by chemical modifications. Depending on the source, there are more than 100, sometimes more than 150, I haven't, I haven't count them. Uh, anyway, they are relatively well known for ribosomal RNA and tRNA. And when you isolate total RNA from the cell, the 90% which, or um, maybe 95% of the material you get, is actually ribosomal RNA and tRNA. So it means it's quite easy to find their something. They were only recently discovered in mRNA and they are very poorly understood for regulatory RNA, which is actually 80% of transcribing DNA. Nowadays, we have wonderful tools in sequencing and actually next generation sequencing. So we are able to uh, uh, analyze millions of sequences for billions. But what we are actually losing is information about the modifications. So these are the examples, or I think these are the really latest uh, discovered RNA modifications. Uh, NAD uh, in 2009, uh, coenzyme A in 2009, uh, tRNA modification, atmatidine in 2010, and tRNA modification uh, generally related to, uh, to thyroid in 2012. Uh, all of them were discovered in prokaryotes. So, uh, I got in the field of RNA modifications in 2010 when I started my uh, postdoctoral studies in Heidelberg and with Professor Yeshke. Uh, and uh, then uh, there I was very interested in uh, uh, cofactor linked RNAs. Because uh, Professor Liu in 2009 found these two very powerful molecules covalently attached to RNA molecules in E. coli, in Streptomyces Venezuela. He, uh, they found that uh, they are just on small RNAs, shorter than 200 nucleotides. Uh, they are quite abundant. In case of NAD RNA, there were more than 3,000 copies per cell and about 200 copies per cell in coenzyme A. In that time, we didn't know anything about the sequence of these RNAs, about the structure of such RNA function by synthesis or by degradation. My task was to, to change it. And uh, I actually succeeded because I developed a very efficient method, we call it NAD, capture sequencing, where you have total RNA and you expect that there is NAD, you treat such a mixture of RNA with ADP ribosyl cyclase and fentanyl, what is actually an enzyme which is able to catalyze transglycosylation reaction to edit here another nucleophile, something what is bearing uh, 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 this uh, copper click or, or clickable group. And if you have their NAD, so this enzyme definitely is able to catalyze saturation of of NAD RNA, then you are getting their copper clickable group. Uh, you use copper clickable reaction with biotin enzyme, and then you can capture such an RNA on streptomyces, beads, and you can perform next generation sequencing by a combination of targets uh, or of uh, molecular biological techniques. So what I did, I prepared uh, three types of uh, next generation sequencing libraries from E. coli. And we found that actually NAD RNA is covalently attached to certain types of small RNAs, not to all of them, just only to certain. These RNAs are non coding, uh, they have some kind of uh, regulatory role, and they are uh, they, they have some connection with stress. Every of them, a little bit different one, uh, not really well understood, but there is connection with stress. Uh, we also found that it's on small RNAs coded on plasmide, on true plasmide. Uh, it's regulating the replication of the plasmide, and uh, we define new, um, we found new type of short fragments of some mRNAs having uh, this NAD there. So what we suggested is that uh, it can play some kind of role. So because we know the the cap uh, also of cap sorry, 
Uh, we know the cat in uh, e eukaryotic cells, but it has uh, nothing has been known for prokaryotic. Only in 2008 there was triphosphorylated RNA uh, detected in uh, in prokaryotes. So what we suggest is actually that there are actually three types of RNA molecules: monophosphorylated, triphosphorylated, and NAD RNA. And then the cell can choose which RNA it wants to use and want to keep and want to degrade. Uh, so, if we all have just monophosphorylated RNA, such RNA is available to cleavage by RNA-C. If you have triphosphorylated RNA, uh, the cell must first use RPPH ribosome pyrophosphatase to cleave triphosphate to get monophosphorylated RNA, which is again available to degradation. And if you have NAD RNA, such RNA must be first treated with mu C, uh, which is a special nudix enzyme, as well as RPPH. <coughs> then you cleave NAD or uh, nicotine. A nicotine and nicotine and you get again monophosphorylated RNA which can be cleaved. So in 2009 when these molecules were detected we didn't know anything about their sequence, function, biosynthesis and biodegradation. I think in 2016 the situation is different. We know the sequence, we know that there are some small RNAs uh, in prokaryotes uh, uh, who have it. Uh, we don't know uh, anything about eukaryotes so far. We know the function such an RNA is definitely much stable, but more stable. We don't know whether there is any, any other role, because, for example, NAD is really part of molecules, <coughs> much more. We know the biosynthesis, uh, I think it was group of Professor Elias, together with the Gorkasny from uh, Macrobiological Institute, they found uh, that it's actually RNA polymerase who is incorporated. Uh, and we know the biodegradation is new to see. This was published by two groups independently at the same time by Professor Yeshke from Mindberg and one Chinese group. So, what we know, we suggest, okay, now we know that prokaryotes have also RNA cap. We say that it's NAD. And in my uh, group, we are also trying to find new RNA modifications. So, I will show you like how people usually do it, but we are also trying to do. So, when you want to search for new RNA modification, you would it, the first thing is like whether you're searching prokaryotes or in eukaryotes. You isolate total RNA, you digest it through the form of nucleotides or nucleosides, and then you perform MS analysis. If you analyze prokaryotic cells, it's a problem because you don't get any information about eukaryotes, and obviously eukaryotes are much more interesting. Uh, if you analyze eukaryotic cell, it's a, such a mess, it's so complex that you don't detect there anything. So my idea is to take uh, viruses as a model system. Why? Because viruses are were very neglect neglected from the point of view of RNA modifications. Many RNA modifications were detected in the uh, 70s, 80s, but nobody ever mapped it. Uh, we know that they were always under huge evolutional pressure. So whatever they keep is very important, and only for two reasons. Uh, because it's mimicry, so it means that this, the virus is pretending like an iron, iron host RNA. Or it's adaptation that this, uh, the virus, thanks to RNA modification, can recruit cellular mechanisms. In both cases, it's host as a parasite interaction, which is really interesting. They are simple. They have often only a handful of genes. And uh, my idea is like if you have regulatory RNA, which is there in very low concentration in eukaryotic cells for certain reasons, such a regulatory RNA has some kind of modification. If you have a cell which is full of viral particles, which is somehow recruiting the, the metabolisms of the cell, producing also regulatory RNA of, of similar type, so then you are actually increasing the concentration of these RNA and of these RNA modifications. So what we are actually doing nowadays, we are analyzing the RNA from healthy cells, from infected cells, where it's possible from viral particles, and then you perform digestion by nucleus P1, alpha and phosphatase to get nucleosides and this we inject into MS. Uh, so, but here, for example, what you want to see is the difference between healthy and infected cells, quantitative or qualitative. If you see some difference, uh, the difference doesn't mean it's like the RNA modification which is in a viral RNA, but it can be also a reaction of the cell uh, to stress to infection. So what you have to do is actually you have to map it. And for these purposes, you need capturing techniques. There are certain capturing techniques developed, for example, for NAD, what I mentioned already, for one methylated A, etc. But if you have some new modification, this is a matter which you, what you have to definitely develop to capture such RNA. 
but you have uh, the way how to how to uh, sequence it. And this is definitely also part of our research, but I'm not going to talk about it today. So then you are able to get information about the sequence of such a modified RNA, and then you, uh, you can start to search for function interacting pattern of pathogens as a pilot information. So here's this example of our first data. So we took supernatant from the hex cells treated or infected with HIV vector, and after digestion we inject it to uh, MS. This is what you see. It's a it's a chromatogram from what you can't see much. I expected you know to see some like a really nice piece of new modifications. No, this is not what you see. You should know what you are searching for. So then you know, okay, I am searching for, for example, one metallic clay. And okay, we can see there three. This is HIV. So you can see one metallic A, uh, metoxy A, or six metallic A. What is really interesting on this is actually that the amount, even though it's not quantitative method, uh, amount of M1A uh, is much higher than, uh, than uh, the amount of one metallic A is much higher than uh, amount of six metallic A. And this is something which hasn't been published so far. What we have to do now and what we are actually starting to do uh, it's like we have to map it to perform next generation sequencing. There is actually a method using antibodies uh, published uh, this year for one metallic A, and this is something what we are going to do. So these are methylation, okay? It's quite easy, you know, like you're searching methylation A, you're searching methylation G, etc., and you, you, you can find it there. But if you want to find there other RNA modifications, for example, RNA caps. If you imagine RNA molecule, which is really big, for example, having thousands of nucleotides, there's only one RNA cap. So it's also like a, the concentration already from this point of view is very, very low. And it would be pretty hard to detect it just, just by the way to by accident. Uh, so here is an example of classical mRNA cap, uh, which I already mentioned. Here are caps which are known in prokaryotes, this is NAD and triphosphate. Uh, uh, and RNA in, in prokaryotes as well. And also there are some dip, uh, uh, diphosphates in uh, rotaviruses or in the cells which are infected with rotaviruses. In all these cases, uh, for the degradations are responsible uh, the enzymes from the class of Nugix enzymes. So, and these are very interesting enzymes. So we started to think about it from the different points of view, like a uh, Okay, is there something which can give us some hint where to search for what modifications to search, what can be, for example, degradation pathway? And these nodic satellites are very, very interesting class of enzymes because they are known in all classes of organisms. Uh, they, it was believed that they have some kind of house cleaning function, cleaving of the triphosphate, which, uh, which are produced by, you know, by stress, oxidative stress, etc. But in many, uh, for many of them, we do not know real in vitro, in vivo substrate. We know the only in vitro substrates, and there are certain which can catalyze uh, hydrolysis of wide range of organic biophosphates like coenzyme A, phosphonase A, AP4, AP5A, etc. And for example, new C, which we found that is able to cleave NADRNA, was known to cleave only NADH and AP2A. And we found that definitely natural substrate of this enzyme is NADRNA. So we got inspiration from it and we thought, okay, for example, what about these AP4A and AP5? They are very interesting because they are, uh, you can find them in the brain cells, in platelets, and so on. They are increased in cells under stress. Uh, their name is some kind of alarm mode because they, you, they can regulate gene expression and they are cleaned by some nodic enzyme. So we said, okay, let's try to prepare. RNA during these so-called caps, and we just added to uh, in vitro transcription, and we were very surprised. What we can see is in vitro trans trans transcription, which is working in the presence of AP4A and AP5A, uh, twice better. We already quantified it's definitely twice better than the natural in vitro transcription when you have only natural triphosphates. And we thought, okay, uh, is AP4A or AP5A actually covalently attached, or is it just promotion? And we saw that it's covalently attached. So RNA polymerase meets these, these wonderful molecules and it immediately starts uh, production of RNA. So it really initiates initiate the, uh, the initial transcription. So this RNA is definitely kept. Uh, then we thought, okay, 
is it really like a disk MP4A and so on? Can we, for example, clean it by RPPH? What is new disk and that? And this is definitely the case. So we can clean it by RPPH to get monophosphorylated RNA, and then by terminating the chemoplanes, it's a place we can clean it completely. So we are now working on developing UPL CMS method for detection, and we will test various cells whether we can find it there and whether this could be new class of RNA modifications of new RNA caps so we believe it can be. So what we are actually nowadays doing is we are studying far RNA, we are trying to discover new RNA modifications in the way I showed you today. We are also working on the development of new capturing techniques. Uh, we would like to find uh, their biking partners and find uh, the function of such RNA. Uh, which is modified, and we believe that there could be some application for our research. So, now I would like to thank uh, mainly uh, to Grange Agency for supporting uh, this my first year of, uh, of independent research, IOCB for giving me opportunity to have my own independent group, MS Group and Biology Group, which, uh, with whom uh, we uh, collaborated thanks to them we can do our research, my great team, and you for your kind attention.